Hi everyone, it's Imogen and welcome back to Colouring Kids. I hope you're all well. In today's video, I wanted to share a tutorial of how I coloured the cloud background in Worlds Within Worlds. Uh, I had quite a few requests to do this video and I thought I would do it because it was the first time I'd tried out this specific technique and I'm actually planning on doing it for another page as well. So um, I will talk you through what I did um, and show you as well. Um, before I get started, I do want to mention that I'm now shipping internationally on my Etsy store. So um, if you're not in the UK, I am now shipping worldwide, which is really exciting. Um, I've got new listings up as well, um, more bookmarks, which seem to be really popular. Um, thank you so much to those of you who have bought some. And there will be more listings coming soon, uh, probably not in the way of bookmarks just yet. Um, I'll have to see what I can come up with, but I really appreciate all your support and I will link it down below if you're interested. So um, the only back uh, backgrounds I'd really done before that were cloud ones were uh, a stencil background. So let me find it for you, the page I did. So this one, I actually cut out a stencil um, using cards and I just made a cloud shape and then used soft pastel. And I really like the effect of this because if you've got a blank background, it's a great go to because you can fill it and make it look pretty um, without it being too complicated. So that's how I did my clouds. But this picture initially um, stumped me because I thought, what am I going to do? Um, there's a huge background of clouds and I didn't really know what to do. Um, because these are Kirby books, some of his lines can be really uh, thick. Um, and dark and then others are more sketchy and grey so these clouds were quite um you know drawn out um, especially the outlines of the clouds they were quite dark the the lines here which i've outlined they weren't as thick but i wanted to outline them as well just for consistency so this didn't take too long once i found what to do uh, the bit that took ages was the outlining in the white gel pen. But I'm going to tell you what colours I used for this page and then do the same technique but with slightly different colours on this page in Fragile World. Now, this is a buddy colour with the lovely Valentina from Universe Art. Um, we are holding off doing it for a bit but I thought I would do this um, tutorial first and then um leave it until we both have time to to color it so i have just briefly started it here this was in my completed pages as a whip but i have barely started it so that is absolutely fine so the process that i did for this page was i firstly put down a base of soft pastel now i am not doing that this time in the, the fragile worlds picture it doesn't really make a difference but if you want an initial layer of colour down already so that you don't have to do as much pencil work I'd recommend doing that. You might be able to pick up um, on these bigger clouds that the actual paper is off-white. It's actually a really light blue whereas um, the the gel pen stands out a lot more because the paper isn't actually white itself so that's why it does work really well. Um, having a pastel background because it means that the, the white gel pen does stand out but I'm not doing that this time and then I went with pencil over the top and instead of blending with uh, a blender pencil or um, a blending pen or anything like that I was actually using these uh, Fantastics and I got these from Michael's ages ago when we went to America and all they are it's kind of like a, a foamy um kind of like a blending stump. I don't really know how to explain it. It's quite squishy and it was really good at just um, burnishing everything and smoothing it out. So I was just using these. Um, you can also uh, dip these in blending solution like Zest It Blend and use them that way. But I just did them and used them dry and they seem to work fine. So that's what I used. So it's more of a soft blend rather than um, using a, a harsher material. So the pencils that I used were all Prismacolor and I will show you them now. So I used five pencils. The The darkest that I used was the Blue Violet Lake PC1079. Some of these are getting really short so the names aren't on them unfortunately. Um, 
non-photo blue PC919 and then the lightest blue was powder blue PC1087 so they were the blues and then I did also come in with some greys to add shadow so I still use the greys in this new one um, that I'm doing but I'll show you the other colours I'm using instead so we have 50% cool grey PC1063 and 20% cool grey PC1060 so they're the five colours it's really not um, too much which is good it's much more simple to do if you don't have many colours and then the gel pen that I use is the Arteza um, gel pen for this particular page I used 0.6 um, and if I'm being honest it did take a lot longer than if I'd used the, the one but I didn't want the uh, one to run out and I do need to get some more of these but um, I'm holding off for a bit because you know I don't want to spend too much in one go so um, this is my preferred nib and I've actually had a couple of questions about these not working and the reason these worked so well for me on this background was because I didn't burnish my pencils it wasn't a really waxy surface and it was a, a smoothed out surface which made it easier for the, the gel pen to work so that's what I recommend you don't want to uh, you know burnish um, waxy pencils like Prismacolor so much so that you can't then layer them on so that's what I used so that was my process for that page I think that makes sense and I'm just going to be applying the same thing to my fragile world picture and the, the process is exactly the same just slightly different colors and I'm not using a pastel base so I didn't want to use a pastel base because I want this to be more of a smoky background and so I don't want too much color so the pencils that I'm using are almost the same. I've got the same greys that I just said. Um, and instead of these three blues, um, obviously in this order, the blue violet lake, then the non-photo blue, then the powder blue, I'm keeping the blue violet lake. That's still my darkest, but I'm not using these. So instead of the blue violet lake, sorry, no, the non-photo blue and the powder blue, I'm using slate grey and cloud blue and then for accent um color which i didn't do in the other one i'm using celadon green just to get a bit of green in there if i want it and what has actually um happened as i've been you know working out what i want to do with this the slate gray is actually now my darkest color when when i put down the colors so i'm just going to show you on a, a small section of this what i actually do so where there are obvious shadows where the clouds overlap i put down my darkest color so in these areas um here where they do physically overlap I, I put a layer and it's a very light layer i'm not really putting too much pressure down so i don't put this everywhere the uh the bluey section or it's more of a smoky gray though really because um it's not as bright as the other one yeah, I put down this. And so that's pretty much where I would put it. I don't put it everywhere. I might put a little bit here, actually. But you just kind of pick and choose where you want your shadow areas to be. And then I'm blending with the Blue Violet Lake. And I'm using very light pressure here because I don't want it to be too bright. So all I'm doing is merging the two colours together and feathering out a tiny bit into the area but not that much because I want a lot of um, empty space which is unusual for me usually I wouldn't okay and then finally I'm going to blend with the cloud blue so cloud blue is one of my favorite colors because it is just so light and it does have that kind of greyish tone to it, so it is a great colour to just blend everything. Because it is, um, you know, you'd use it the same as you'd use a white, kind of. But obviously it's got that blue tint to it, which is really nice. So I do use more pressure with this because it's helping me burnish everything slightly, not too much. So once I've done that, um, I will just zoom in a bit for you um, so that you can see this next bit because I did
do a few smaller areas. So once I've gone over in the, the larger areas, I then take the, the greys and the greys I just put in areas of shading that might not be as obvious. Um, they're a lot smaller and I don't want the grey everywhere. So it's definitely more of a pick and choosing situation. So just going in, choosing some areas, maybe, you know, going over these lines that have been placed. And then exactly the same thing as what I did with the cloud blue. I'm then just simply burnishing with the lighter 20% grey. And depending on how it looks, I might go and burnish the blue bits as well with the grey so that the, the blue isn't quite as bright. So that's what I'm doing here as well. Because I do want this to kind of be the dullest part of the picture so that the background doesn't detract from everything else that's happening. That's kind of my plan. Because in the Worlds Within Worlds picture, I had loads of other bright colours going on. Um, it didn't really matter that the background was also quite bright. Because that was the only place that I used the blue. But I am probably going to use blue quite a bit more in this picture. So I just want to make sure that I'm not using too much in the background. So that's kind of pretty much done. The only thing that I do want to do is add shadow... Um, on the back part of the, the background because there are rocks and the, the penguins here. So I'm just going to add more of a shadow. And when, um, when Valentina and I do come to do this buddy colour later on in the year probably, um, I will be doing another colour and chat with this page like I did with my polar bear which is really exciting so that's pretty much done so at the moment it looks um quite colored um it may not show up too well on camera but um that's done in terms of the coloring I just wanted to cut in to this section and just mention that um I'm aware that I didn't use the the salad on green as part of my um blending for the the color i just didn't feel like for this section it needed any green um as i said this was the accent color so sometimes i'll use it and sometimes um i won't i did use it here and up here because they were slightly bigger areas and i wanted a slight green tint but this isn't um a color that i will use um all the time as part of the blend like i did with the others so um i hope that makes sense and um, I'll carry on with the video. Now I'm, I'm going to go in with the, the blender because I find it worked really well and just kind of um, push everything together. It's very odd how these work but they do work very well. It kind of just smooths everything out. It takes a bit more than, um, sorry, it takes a bit more uh, pressure to, to work but it does work. Yeah, it kind of just meshes everything together. Really like them. So once I've um, done the blending, I'm happy with it. I then go in with my gel pen. So that's the last step. I never will then go back in with pencil because it just, you know, there's that risk of it scratching off. So I do go over every single line. I'm not going to do them here because I haven't quite finished the, the colouring part of those sections. So these gel pens are quite good they do get going pretty quickly and if you do have an issue with them um try scratching them off make sure there's no um white on the nib which actually for me there is so that might be contributing to it and just test it out before you use the picture the reason i've done all the shadows is so that when you then go over with the gel pen you still have color coming through because otherwise if I hadn't put shadows in you wouldn't really know where the clouds were overlapping and also it just means that there's less white next to white you know if I'm whiting over these lines I don't want there to be loads of white space right next to it I want there to be colour so this bit 
is the bit that takes a long time and obviously I am colouring on camera so it takes me longer anyway but just be aware that this process can take a long time so I would say for every quarter of the heron page that I did um oh no say a quarter of it took me an hour I can't actually remember how long it took me but say it took me an hour the actual colouring process would be about 15 20 minutes and then the rest would be the, the outlining because i really like to make sure that they are they are as opaque as possible and it just does take a long time so i'm not going to do any more white gel pen now because i want to make sure that the next bit uh, will be done before i then start going over with the white gel pen because you know i don't want it scratching off so that is basically how i do it i hope that has um explained it all right for you if you still have any questions please let me know um as i would say this is just how i do it it's just um my method which was an experiment for me anyway when i first did it but yeah i hope that it has given you some ideas and i really appreciate those of you who um we're interested in how i did this i'll hold it up for you now so you can see but i know obviously they're different colors but the process i use is exactly the same so yeah that is the cloud tutorial um as always if you see anything in my pictures that you like and want me to show i'm always up for that um you know lots of the the techniques that i try are experimental and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't and I was pleased with this, although it did take a while. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching, everyone. Everything will be uh, linked down in the description below, as usual. And I will speak to you all in my next video. Bye, everyone.